So Zach and I are going to do a little bit of a, a trade-off here. So, um, real well. So I was going to like do a quick like disclaimer about the the rules of QueryCon, but I'm just going to skip this for now. So I want to talk about some motivation for this talk. So you know, my name is Mike. I work at Collide. That's Zach. Zach also works at Collide. Um, we used to work on OS Query at Facebook, and we've been working with OS Query for for a while, for several years now. Um, and the motivation for this talk is really that um, when you, as you get uh, sufficiently complex OS query deployments, um, the things that become really important to you are enforcing code review, making sure that you have a good audit log of uh, how your configurations are changing over time. Uh, if, you're, if you have a large team of individuals that are all working on a shared set of OS query configuration, it can be pretty complicated to uh, coordinate that. Um, and specific, and so what we see is a lot of folks, both you know, my time at Facebook, what we you know, we use OS Query Collide, we like help other a lot of customers use OS Query, and um, the we see a few challenges pretty consistently, both with the OS Query config file format, uh, sharing intelligence, and um, the the workflows therein. So, so that presents some challenges. And you know, just to, I just want to reiterate, like the idea of OS Query is and has always been that you articulate facts uh, about an operating system that you want to monitor with SQL. That's the whole idea, right? There's a thing you want to understand about an operating system. You write a SQL query. The SQL query exposes a set of data that you're interested in, and then you can use the tools, whether it's OS Query D or OS Query I, and all of the options that exist in the tools to kind of like get at that data in a variety of different ways. So you know you. Can you could have a query that you're really into, and you could say, hey, I want to see the results of this query every uh, 30 seconds, or, and I just want to see all the results every time. And you know, that would be, you know, query speak, uh, you know, snapshot true, interval 30. Or you might only want the added results, or you might want just the differential. So basically, you know, you have queries, you can get results in a variety of different ways. But that's the idea, right? The idea has always been, so like, uh, you know, you, you have SQL queries and you can apply them in different ways. So given that SQL queries are the key idea here, how do we organize, edit, maintain, reuse, test, deploy, share, all of these uh, different pieces of Intel? So that's the, uh, that's the motivation. So, you know, we have, we have all these queries uh, and we're kind of we're kind of running into some complications with how with accomplishing these objectives that we just talked about. So, and I'm going to walk through three limitations in that I perceive in the OS query uh, in configuration mechanisms right now, um, and those are uh, query reuse uh, across packs, uh, discovery queries like the idea of discovery queries. I'll explain discovery queries if you, if y'all aren't super familiar with it, and. Um, you know the idea of commenting your your intel and commenting your configuration and uh, adding extra context and having it uh, having your configuration be like a uh, effective authoring experience. So query reuse, you know, first up on the chopping block. So let's say you have a uh, you know this uh, hopefully looks familiar to most of you. It's like a MVP pack. Um, but let's say you have a pack in here. It's called pack one, and you have a query in it uh, called hacks. And the query is just select foo from bar. It doesn't really matter what the query is. But let's say you think this query is awesome. You know, it returns a bunch of really interesting, cool results. Um, and it's great. You really like this query. And now there's a bunch of people on your team that potentially use OS query. And, um, you know, someone else on your team saw that you have this query in this one pack and was like, wow, that's great. I'm working on another pack. Now, I don't need it to be a 60 second differential query. I want a snapshot query. Thus, I want to run it more often. So I'm going to take this query, copy it into a new pack. And now in this example, it's just on one file, but these might be in one, like several thousand line config file that you're distributing to all your hosts. They might be in different packs. It depends on like how you're organizing your OS query configuration. But the key idea here is that you had a pack, you thought it was great, you copied it into another pack or someone else on your team did and uh, changed the options a little bit for uh, when they scheduled that query. Now, now, what happens when somebody comes along, observes a performance deficiency in this query, uh, and they observe that, hey, like you know, this this pack is running on my uh, on my host. I'm going to go go in. I'm going to fix this query. I'm going to make it a little faster. I'm going to add some more information. They change one query, but the other query is still the same, and that's that. Like adds some complications because it. Um, you know, it should be the same query, but if you edit one, uh, how do you know whether or not you should edit the other? If you're making an improvement to one query, how do you know whether or not the query that you copied uh, should also have that change? Um, 
you know, the person that is making the change or might not know that the person that copied the query copied it from somewhere else and that they also need to make that. So this is one problem, in my opinion, with PACs. Uh, right now is that there is no way to share the same query object into different uh, into different packs and to use it for different contexts. So you know, problem number one, and we'll come to the solutions after. But I just kind of want to enumerate some like common pitfalls that you might run into when you're trying to maintain like large monolithic sets of those query configurations. Right. All right. Second one: discover queries. Discovery queries. Sorry. We have a feature uh, called Discover Popular Queries, and I always get it mixed up. But um, okay, so if you're not familiar with discovery queries, discovery queries allow you to articulate one or more queries that allow you to gate uh, a PACS execution on a host. So the original idea for this was like, let's say you have a uh, set of uh, PACS that are in, uh, for instrumenting, or a set of queries in a pack that are for instrumenting uh, MySQL. Uh, intrusion detection or something. You could have a discovery query, select like PID from processes where name equals MySQL. If this query returns any results, then the pack is added to the schedule. If this query at some point stops returning results, then the pack is removed from that schedule, uh, from that host, from the schedule on that host. So this is great, but it requires, uh, the limitation of discovery queries is that it requires you to distribute your intelligence to every host. This may or may not be a big problem, but um, it is less than ideal. Like if you can maintain this on uh, maintain this uh, data of uh, you know what host is running MySQL, what host should get this back, what host should get that back, then uh, it's just clearly more effective for you to uh, distribute the minimum viable set of uh, conf configuration to each OS query host, in my opinion. And the other bit is comments and multi-line queries. So pre-OS Query 3, there was a different library that uh, to parse configuration um, than what is used now. And uh, it was very permissive. It like was not adherent to the standard, and it would allow uh, comments. But then, if you have comments in your OS Query configuration, you can't use another tool to lint your OS, uh, your OS Query packs if you actually did have some invalid uh, JSON in there, because you, you know then you wouldn't um, you know, it would fail on parsing the comments, not necessarily on your actual error, which was causing OS query to fail. So, you know, not being compliant with, uh, you know, the JSON specification was complicated. And also, you know, when you have, uh, so this is the Mac OS tax pack that's on Facebook slash OS query. And, um, you know, when you write these very, very long, complicated OS query queries, they easily become pretty complicated. And so, you know, you see in this example of the pack that's you know currently on master that uh, you, we have these backslashes for new lines. But this is this also is invalid JSON, uh, so it's also difficult to lint. So this is complicated. You know, like the way that we distribute OS query configuration doesn't necessarily lend itself to the best query authoring experience. Um, so, you know, that could I think that could definitely be improved as well. So. You know, we have these problems, in my opinion, with the OS query configuration file format um, and a few others, uh, which we'll get to a little bit. But um, so in Fleet, we, uh, so Fleet is, uh, are any Fleet users here? You want to use Fleet? Okay, a few. Um, so we introduced a new file format. So um, in Fleet, it's pretty straightforward file format. And the whole idea here is that you, uh, it's a lightweight file format that allows you to define objects in the OS query uh, lexicon. You know, OS query, you have these ideas. There's like this vocabulary of the OS query, of the OS query ecosystem. You know, you have queries, you have packs, you have labels, a um, bunch of other stuff, right? So the idea here is that you define your uh, queries in this file format, which kind of resembles Kubernetes. I'm not going to talk about Kubernetes in this talk. Happy to talk about Kubernetes afterwards. We just don't have time. But um, you know, very inspired by the Kubernetes file format. And then the idea is that you have like a you have a whole mess of these queries. You know, you have these minimal files where you write one query. Uh, you define what platforms it supports, what versions of OS query it requires. You like define all the things you have to for this one query, and then you can compose that uh, with the uh, other file format for packs that allow you to reference these these queries by name. So you know you could, uh, for example, schedule the same query in a pack twice. Let's say you want to have one query that's a differential query that runs every 60 seconds, and that same query as a snapshot query that's running once an hour, so that you can kind of compare the results as, uh, as you go along. Um, you can include the same exact query in the same pack, and then when you edit the query, you know it gets updated atomically. Um, in, in both instances. Similarly, you can share the same query across multiple packs and everything is, is kind of consistent. And now it's also worth noting that as you go about writing uh, these text files and applying them with the CLI, uh, the UI stays in sync. 
uh, with all this, of course. So this is a, this is an example of uh, you know a pack and a query defined in the same file, which also you know you may ask like oh what about the decentralized sharing of intelligence bit? Well, the problem that we have right now with uh, distributing packs is that you know we put a bunch of packs on. Uh, on a GitHub repository or something, and it's not really like the the ba basically what you have to do to get them to all your hosts is you have to take these files, and, you know, read them, make sure they're legit, and then distribute them to all of the hosts across your entire infrastructure, um, as opposed to, um, you know, with uh, with the fleet control file format, you you can pull this one kind of like blob of uh, self-contained intelligence, apply it to your server, and then the server can kind of crunch like, okay, this is targeted at these labels, these labels are defined by these queries, this pack include these queries, um, you know, here's all of them, let me crunch this, and then let me selectively distribute this to a host. So it's just a nice way to kind of bundle up uh, stuff if you want to. So normally uh, you might want to keep your queries over here and your packs over here that reference them, but if you want to share something atomically and have this one file that you can just apply, then you can keep them all together, which is great. So uh, so in order, so all right, so we've talked about the file format a little bit, we've talked about some of the deficiencies of the existing file format and hopefully how the new file format solves some of those deficiencies. Now, similarly, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you have a, a set of configuration files, which Kubernetes, if you're not familiar, is a, a container orchestration framework. So basically, if you buy into the idea of uh, using containers to package and distribute your software, then you can um, you know, define how many of these containers you want to run, what's the node affinity of how you want to run them, how you want to scale them, what are the, uh, you know, when you hit this much resource utilization, you want to create another one or what have you. And there's a uh, CLI called Coop Control. Well, we have a CLI called Fleet Control that you can use to manage and interact with, um, you know, your OS query configuration and your OS query server, uh, which is new, you know, which is new as of uh, a few weeks ago. So you can install that on your local host, brew install, collide, tap, Fleet Control, and, uh, and it's cool. So I'm not going to explain too much about Fleet, uh, the Fleet CLI specifically, but uh, instead, uh, Zach is going to show it to you. So demo time. Cool, so we just like to show off um, a few of the capabilities that we have added to Fleet that we think uh, will really make it the most effective way to uh, manage OS query fleets. Um, so like Mike was talking about, we have our new file formats where we can define a pack. Um, you can see that we're referencing all of the um, different queries by uh, their name. We can define them all in one file if we like. Uh, the queries are defined down here in this file. Or we can pull them uh, together from uh, different files. So um, I'm actually demonstrating uh, the OSX attacks pack that we've converted into the new file format. And I can just give a little example of how we can use the fleet control utility to apply this to our, uh, to our fleet. So we can just target to a label, with which if you're unfamiliar with uh, Collide Fleet, a label is our equivalent of a discovery query. It allows you to target your packs and scheduled queries to whichever subsets of hosts you're interested in. So um, for this one, I'll just, um, as a quick example, I'll just put all hosts. And um, then I can come to my terminal and I can uh, apply this file with fleet control. Can we see that at all? Okay, um, oh, I guess I made the other ones bigger already, but not that one. Now can we see that? Sort of? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. Okay. Um, so we can, we can take this file and apply it. Um, and that was OSX attacks. Um, and we see that the 67 queries in one pack were applied. These, this would be updating the queries uh, if they were already there. And then we can start seeing um, over here on this side, I have a launcher running. It immediately starts picking up uh, the configuration and executing the, uh, the queries in that pack. Uh, we can see that here. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is not a new capability. You've always been able to 
schedule queries uh, in packs, get those results and do interesting things with them. But what we think makes this really useful is that in a similar way to, um, in a similar way to OS query exposing the SQL interface to some data that was typically spread across a lot of different sources and hard to work with, we now have this, this Unixy interface to interacting with the entire fleet. So um, we can do cool things like um, we can take advantage of Git uh, to make a change to our pack and we can um, Oh, 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 I see. Thank you. Um, and just as, as an example, now I can um, get push, and I've set up a hook on my remote that will actually run the fleet control command and apply any of the changes. So you can imagine that you would uh, run this through your GitHub or your other source control system or your CI and you'd easily be able to uh, review the changes, um, approve them and then push them out through automation. Uh, so we think that this is this is really cool and will make your job easier if you're uh, using Fleet to manage things. It also works with the UI as well uh, and it's something that we're interested in working with users to understand uh, whether that's something that we want to keep around or if we want to move towards more of this text-based API. Uh, now the other thing that we have is the ability to uh, write queries uh, across our fleet right from the command line. So um, for example, uh, We can run a query and we can see that the results start coming in as JSON. But like I said, we're thinking about how do we keep building up these abstractions. So, um, you know, we're we're in our shell. We're in we're in Z shell here, and uh, we have cool tools like JQ, which do uh, JSON parsing. Uh, we can just do it here to see, like, uh, you know, here I'm just doing some basic formatting, um, but we can pull out. Uh, we can pull out uh, each individual row and output that as a separate object uh, through JQ. Uh, we can uh, write this output directly to a file and then um, and then once we've done that we can use any other um, Unix processing tools that we might be interested in. Uh, you know we could do we could pipe this into uh, sort, into unique. We could do our reverse DNS lookups, whatever else we want to do right here from within the shell. Um, so we're super excited to see what ideas uh, folks come up with for using this. Uh, we really want to work with the community to make sure that this is a super valuable tool and that we can keep evolving all of our capabilities so we can all do more cool stuff. And, um, and just keep getting all that power out of OS Query. Now, I think the thing that's super cool and interesting about uh, fleet control specifically is that, um, you know, typically we all use OS Query I, we all use OS Query D, and OS Query I and OS Query D, the vocabulary is very centric around an individual host. You know, you pop open an OS Query I shell and you're interacting with one host. You write an OS Query configuration and it is what is consumed by a single OS Query D on a single host. Um, but we don't have single hosts. We have a lot of hosts and they're very dynamic and uh, our environments are very dynamic. Um, so what I really want, um, Fleet control to represent is the uh, the idea of you know you're not running you're no longer running queries on one host and this is no longer the pr like the primary way that you mess with OS query is by reasoning about your fleet not by like running a query with OS query I on your single host but by um, you know running live queries on a variety of hosts that like represent the um, diversity of your fleet so. Uh, so that's cool, that's great, and uh, yeah, that's the idea. So like Zach said, we're super psyched about um, fleet control, and hopefully uh, you guys are too. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if, you guys have any, uh, if anyone has any questions, we have uh, 10 minutes. We'd be happy to answer them. Uh,
Yes. 